it's the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to the seventh installment of my shelf tour series here on my channel. And I am hoping that if you're taking a good look at the shirt that I'm wearing, you are probably already figuring out what we're going to be looking at today. Yes, when it comes to my collections, I have them big and small. And today, because of the fact that we are about to start off a three-day holiday weekend, which is when I'm recording this, I'm doing this right before Memorial Day, it means that we have a little extra time to record another video. And when you have this extra time, you've got to try and film a big one. And I don't think that we can get any bigger than my Funko Pop collection. Yes, when I first saw Funko Pops, they were definitely something that I had no interest in. But one of the few things that the CEO of the company, Brian Mariotti, has said is one day someone is going to find a Funko Pop that just speaks to them, and then they are officially going to start collecting. He had even predicted that by 2025, there will be a Funko Pop in every single house around the world. Honestly, I don't know how far the dream has gotten, but one of the few things that I do know is that when I watch a YouTuber, regardless of what community they are from, there is almost always a Funko Pop in the background on their shelf or on their stand or even with them next to them. So... Funko Pops are big, everybody, and they definitely are in a passing fad because uh, in 2021, Funko Pops will have been dominant and still in the good light of many collectors for 10 years, and that is quite incredible. So we've got a lot of ground to cover today, guys, because there's a lot of Funko Pops in this house to showcase, and I'm really excited to do so, so let's get to it. We are back in the office yet again for another shelf tour, and of course this is the big one. We are going to be going over Funko Pops. Now, Funko Pops have pretty much been put all over the house, but most of them are in one specific area, but we still have a couple of them outside of the designated pop space, and there is some good reasons as to why. So we're going to go to my wife's desk first to show her you guys one, and this of course is her Freddy Funko Zodiac Pop. She is a Taurus, so of course I had to get her her own astrological sign. And as we move to the bookshelf over here, we have got my astrological sign, which is Freddy Funko as a Virgo. I've also got two iconic characters in the world of popular culture in Funko Pop form, and I'm so glad to actually have them. I've got Jim Davis's creation, Garfield, and of course, Waldo from Where's Waldo, who I still haven't reviewed in my pop updates yet, but this is just a little tease that he will be very soon. And in regards to more icons, we've got some more up on this shelf over here. This is my wife's Rosie the Riveter. It is a Target exclusive, and she is a huge fan of the iconic pop culture character, so it was wrong not to have this in our collection. And on the top, we've got some ad icons. We've got a very special one, which is Jeffrey the Giraffe, which is a flocked Toys R Us exclusive, which I just managed to get very luckily through Funko's shop. We've got the Coca-Cola Polar Bear. We've got the Funko shop exclusive of Mr. Owl from the Tootsie Pops commercial. And we've got the recent icon that was released, the Morton's Salt Girl. Also, another pop that I have not reviewed, but will be on my Funko Pop update soon. So and we also have a couple of pocket pops, which could be keychains or not, but all the ones that we have here are keychains. I have here a World of Warcraft... Funko Pop pocket keychain, which is actually cool. It's the Murloc because I don't have any World of Warcraft Funko Pops outside of the movie, but I did play the game for 10 years and it only would be right if I actually had a little remnants of the game in pop form. We also have my wife's over here, which is Hermione Granger. And for Fantastic Beasts, we have a Niffler. And because I got the special edition of Deadpool 2 at Walmart, I got a Bob Ross Deadpool pop keychain. So now let's go downstairs and take a look at where the real collection is.
So, as the great Harrison Ford, as Han Solo said, here's where the fun begins. This is where we're going to start. We're going to go back to the music shelf because as you probably have been watching and you saw my review of all my music, you probably noticed that there were a couple of Funko items scattered throughout on the bookshelf. So, we're going to take a look at those pops now and you're going to be getting a lot of me on a stepladder because a lot of these pops are on high levels in this lower level of the house. So, we're going to start from left to right, we're going to take a look first at a Target exclusive rock candy of a DC bombshell, which is Black Canary. This is actually my favorite DC bombshell because I love the fact that she was a siren. And it came with a Target bombshell exclusive DC box, which is, which is where the Legion of Collectors boxes are now. They haven't given us one in a while. They might have discontinued it, but this was the last one that they made. And I never had a rock candy, but the fact that they actually made this one was one of the main reasons why I wanted to get that collector box, because I love this version of Black Canary. And over here, yes, I know that he is part of the movie collection. It is Jareth from the Jim Henson cult classic Labyrinth. But the reason the reason why I have this Funko Pop here is because, obviously, it's the legendary late David Bowie, and it would be wrong to not have David Bowie where the music is. Also, these are not from music bands or anything like that, but it is from a musical, and it is my movie double pack from La La Land, which is Mia and Sebastian, and I love this pop set so dearly because it's also one of my favorite films. I love it, and I also have the soundtrack, which is great too. It would be wrong not to sort of complete my collection without the Funko Pops. So now we are on the upper level, and we're going to take a look at them from left to right. So over here, we have Lady Justice, which is on the cover of Metallica's And Justice for All. We also have Freddie Mercury from his 1986 or 85 Wembley Stadium performance. I love this version. We also have the Kurt Cobain pop. This is the regular one. And also, it would not be a music pop collection in my world if I didn't have Weird Al Yankovic. So over here on the top of this little stack, we've got the MTV Moon Man. Really does make sense to have it here. We've also got the three-pack of Rush, which is fantastic. Also, R.I.P. Neil Peart, you were wonderful. And we are so glad to actually have this set here. At least I am, because I am such a Rush fan. And also over here is an old exclusive box. It is a very rare one right now. It was actually a Barnes & Noble exclusive box set before they even had the stickers. And it, of course, is the Four Beatles from the Yellow Submarine. These are very old pops, very hard to find now as individuals and in the set. But I actually managed to get my hands on this set before it really became rare. It had just retired, and my wife at the time was my girlfriend, got it for me as a birthday gift. But as you can see, you've got John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr, and of course you've got a limited exclusive Beatles Yellow Submarine picture book in this set. Very, very happy to have it. Over here on the right, we've got one of the newest pop groups to come to Funko's world, and that, of course, was the whole set of various versions of Eddie, who is the face of the band Iron Maiden, which I am a big fan of. And, of course, we've also got the best, because you wanted the best. It is Kiss. So we've got Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Ace Frehley, and Peter Chris. And that wraps up this shelf. Let's move on to the next one. So, of course, we're going to go take a look at the shelves over here where all my DVDs are because there are some pops over here. Now, these are not permanent residents, at least not the ones on the shelves themselves rather than the ones on top of the shelves. Those will stay where they are for now. But it's only because of the fact that at some point in time, my wife and I were planning on getting some more bookshelves and we were planning on cleaning out the storage closet and also getting some new pieces of furniture to store some of our wedding gifts that we still have not opened. But because of the fact that COVID-19 hit, we just haven't been able to go to any of these stores. But hopefully in the coming weeks, we will be able to and finally get these projects completed. So we're going to go from left to right. Over here, we have one of my 
all-time favorite idols in all of film and just creative minds in general. This, of course, is Jim Henson. I know that there was a Target exclusive of him holding an Ernie, but when it comes to Jim Henson, the first thing that comes to mind is Kermit the Frog. Over here, we've got the San Diego Comic-Con exclusives from 2019, the Double Pack Kang and Kodos from The Simpsons, and I was very happy to actually get these pops because I never had any Simpsons representation in my Funko Pop collection. I never really cared for the designs, but I loved this box set so much, so I had to get them. There are some rumors that there will be Comic Book Guy, who I would be very considerate of getting to my collection, but if they ever made Hans Mole Man presenting Man Getting Hit by Football, I would seriously consider getting that one as well. Down here, we've also got another legend of mature viewer animation. It, of course, is the legendary MTV icon Daria. This is a 2019 New York City Comic Con exclusive, and it would have been wrong not to get this character because my wife and I are actually big Daria fans. I actually prefer Daria over Beavis and Butthead. On this shelf over here, one of my newest additions to the collection, I got Billy Madison in the bathtub. Yeah, I have not reviewed this one yet, but I will be soon, but... I love this movie so much, I never would have thought that I would have been interested in adding one of these to my collection, especially considering that I didn't like the penguin, and that's my favorite part of the movie, but when I saw the sculpt of this one and just the legendary moment of that film, it would have been wrong for me not to get this one, and I did actually get this when my wife and I were traveling home from Washington, D.C. earlier this year, and we went to a box lunch in Delaware. So this is actually a pop that I got from outside of New York. I actually have a few of those. I think there might only be two, but yes, I have gotten pops when I have been traveling. And on this shelf, which obviously has no room for movies at all, I decided to just put some pops here, but that might change. I may put an extra shelf here, depending on how big the collection gets. But this is where I've got a couple of dorbs, as well as some deluxe pops, like movie moments and such. So over here, let's go through the dorbs. I've got a Batman in his Batmobile from Batman the Animated Series. It's a dorbs rides, and I got this in the DC Legion of Collector box that was Batman the animated series. That was a selling point along with the pop and the t-shirt that came in this box. Very glad to have it. And over here, I also have another exclusive. Only 5,000 pieces. It is George Jetson in a Dorbs ride in his car. And the only reason why I got this one was because at the time, I had no idea if they were ever going to make Jetson's Funko Pops. But if you are a collector like me that follows what lines are out there, you obviously know that that happened at the end. But I got this anyway. I'm not regretting this purchase. I love the Jetsons so much, it only adds to my collection of this amazing cartoon. And over here, we've got a movie moment from Sorcerer Mickey on the Rock with the Waves. This is the 90th anniversary of Mickey. It was a box lunch pre-release exclusive. You could get this everywhere now if you can find it, but I love this iconic moment in Fantasia. Fantasia is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's my it's actually my favorite Disney canon classic, so of course I had to add this to my collection. And I've got a Walgreens exclusive of my favorite moment in the MCU timeline, and that of course was Hulk smashing Loki. This was actually a gift from Cammy over at Cammy's Corner. Never anticipated this to actually be coming to me from her, but I was having such a hard time finding this one because it is a Walgreens exclusive, but she managed to find it and she just got it for me. But yes, I did return the favor and got her something that in the world of Funko that she didn't have. And over here, I had never had any Ghostbusters pops in my collection until I got the Banquet Room movie moment from the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters set. They were a pop line that came out very, very early, but of course they were due for a makeover. So of course they capitalized on the anniversary to give us this amazing pop movie moment, and I love it so much because the details on this are just incredible, especially the Ecto Trap and the Slimer and the Proton Packs. The, the details on that one are just so great. That's the only reason why I got it. The whole package is beautiful. So let's go up top to see what's up there. So yes, I do, of course, have some Game of Thrones pops, but I'm also 
thinking that this may in fact be the entire set that I'm ever going to get. I really think that I've completed it at this point. I pretty much got a whole bunch of things that I knew that I wanted to add to my collection. At one point, I had no intentions to get them until New York Comic Con. I believe this was from 2014, maybe 2015, but either way, I got the Iron Throne because I said if I can get only one Game of Thrones pop, it would have to be this one because this pretty much is what Game of Thrones is all about. But clearly that wasn't the case. I got a few more. I got Sansa Stark as Queen of the North very recently. I also got the original Tyrion Lannister because it was a special, like you buy a couple of items on Amazon, get this for like $4.99, so of course I did. I've got the 2019 Emerald City Comic Con Arya Stark. I've got Lord Varys, who is my favorite character on the show. I got Theon Greyjoy, who was in dire need of a Funko Pop, and my god, did they do him justice. I got the 20... 17 New York City Comic Con exclusive of, of Liana Mormont, who my wife and I adored, and the 2018 San Diego Comic Con exclusive of Olena Tyrell, who I love as well, and we got some pop rides. I got Daenerys on Drogon, I've got the Night King on Icy Viserion, and I also got Jon Snow on Rhaegal. This was basically the way that I managed to get Jon Snow, Danny Targaryen, and the Night King into my collection, but... This is also how I got all three of the dragons. Harry Potter is also a massive collection right now in Funko, and of course ever popular, but I didn't want to go for every single one of them, so I really was just searching for exclusives, as well as anything that had to do with Quidditch, because that is my favorite part about Harry Potter. So, we'll go from top to bottom. So, of course, we also got some Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them pops. So, I got Newt Scamander with Pickett, Hot Topic exclusive. I've got the Niffler, who is Flocked, also a Hot Topic exclusive. I had gotten a pre-release Hot Topic exclusive of Quidditch Harry, also the Hot Topic exclusive of Quidditch Draco, who is actually worth a lot of money right now. I also got just the regular Gilderoy Lockhart because I love Kenneth Branagh and I love his version of Gilderoy Lockhart. Also, the BAM exclusive of Seamus Finnegan, because I said to people if they ever made Seamus Finnegan with a charred face, I would have to get it, and they did. The Barnes & Noble exclusive of Ginny Weasley in her Quidditch outfit. The Common of Ron Weasley in his Quidditch outfit. The GameStop exclusive of Sirius Black in his Have You Seen This Wizard Prisoner of Azkaban clothes. And the 2000. 18 New York Comic Con exclusive of Professor Quirrell only because of the fact that his turban comes off and on the back you can see Voldemort's face and this is the only version of Voldemort I even have in my collection and to top it all off I've got the Hogwarts Express that was how I managed to get Harry, Ron, and Hermione and the only reason why I got them believe it or not was because Ron had dirt on his nose. While these aren't all of the classic cartoon pops that I have in my collection, it is pretty much all of them. There are still a few that are in another room in the house, which we're about to go to, but I am someone who believes that the preserving of cartoon characters from the 1950s, 60s, even all the way to the 90s, very important to let people know what had come before the current cartoons that their kids are watching. So, we've got a Funko specialty series of Popeye. We've got the only chase that I have in my collection of Woody Woodpecker, only because of the fact that he was holding a mallet. The 2017 Emerald City Comic Con exclusive of Michigan J. Frog. This was the first Emerald City Comic Con pop I ever got, and it is also the first Looney Tunes pop I ever got. Rocky and Bullwinkle. The Funko Shop exclusive of Felix the Cat. All of the Jetsons collection. So we've got George, Jane, Judy, Elroy, Astro, Rosie, and the Funko Shop exclusive of Mr. Spacely. And over here, one of my favorite cartoon characters of all time, the Animaniacs. I've got Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. And if you're going to get the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister, you've got to get Pinky and the Brain, too. So now, let's go to where the rest of my collection is. Get ready, everybody. It's gonna be crazy. So where are we right now, everyone? We are in my favorite place in the entire house, which happens to be a walk-in closet. And this is where every other Funko Pop 
in my collection is, and we're going to go all the way around and go over them. But before we get into all the stuff on the top shelf, we're going to go over a couple of other pops that we are seeing right down here. Because of the fact that I am short on room, but again, it's going to change very, very soon, I have a couple of Funko Pops over here that are brand new that I have not been able to display, and that, of course, is my Hot Topic exclusive of Rogue, my Glow in the Dark Entertainment Earth exclusive of Gambit, and one of my newest additions to my collection, which I love so dearly, Wonder Woman 84's Cheetah. And of course, over here, we have pretty much most of these belong to my wife, except for a couple that I would like to pretty much say that we share. So we're going to go from top to bottom. We've got the Toys R Us exclusive double pack of Mini and Mini Valentine's Day, the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con Carl and Ellie from Up, the 2017 San Diego Comic-Con Flocked Chippendale double pack. I am a Chippendale fanatic. Had to get them. The Hot Topic exclusive flocked Winnie the Pooh, Olaf, yes, you are not being deceived here, everybody. This is the original Series 2 Steamboat Willie. I got it right around the time it retired. It was such a quick find, very easy to get my hands on, very glad I have it. And right next to it is, yes, the original Sorcerer Mickey. I believe this is from Series 4, possibly Series 5, but these two pops alone are worth a lot of money, and I'm so glad that I have these. As a matter of fact, this one over here, Sorcerer Mickey, was one of the first pops I ever gave to my wife as a Just Because gift. We've also got Sven, also my wife's, a 2017 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive flocked Tigger, which goes perfectly with the flocked poo. We've also got a couple of Care Bears, of course, as 80s children, how could you not have the Care Bears? So we've got Grumpy Bear, Cheer Bear, and a Funko Shop exclusive Bedtime Bear that is very hard to find right now. My wife is a gigantic Fraggle Rock fan, and I got her a whole bunch of Fraggle Rock Pops. Actually, she got them for herself because she likes them a lot. So we've got Red and Boober and her favorite character in the entire show, a Toys R Us exclusive, Sprocket. Down here, we have the Amazon exclusive Pua with Hey Hey on his head. Beast with Birds, which was something that my wife just saw one day in a Barnes & Noble and just had to get. The 2017 New York Comic Con exclusive of Scrooge McDuck from DuckTales, jumping out of a pile of money, which is fantastic. The Target exclusive of Gizmo Duck. Hot Topic exclusives Flocked, Sitting Sad Stitch, one of my wife's favorite Funko Pops. Zazu. Mushu and Cricket. Snoopy and Woodstock. Haruhi from Oran High School Host Club. This is one of my wife's favorite animes, so got it for her. We've also got the very first Funko Pop that I ever gave to my wife, and it, of course, is the original Hello Kitty, which is actually worth a decent amount of money right now. We've also got Figment, who is a Epcot Center Disney theme park exclusive. Never thought in my wildest dreams that I would ever get one of these exclusives. So yes, I did actually get this at the Disney park. And very, very happy to have it because Figment was such a big part of my childhood. And I'm so glad to have him in my collection. We've got Scuttle. Another one of my wife's favorites, Once Upon a Time, Captain Hook. The 2018 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive of the 8-Bit Wreck-It Ralph. Love this one so much. Kronk. We've got Hades. Hot Topic exclusive. Iago. And the original version of Captain Jack Sparrow. And before we go all the way up top, we've got a couple of Funko Pops over here that I would like to show you. I've got two Pop Rides which are Speed Racer in the Mach 5, and down below it is the very first pop ride I ever got, which was the Turtle Van. It is actually the only Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pop I have in my collection, and the fact that it came with Michelangelo holding a slice of pizza just made it all the more fun. It was actually given to me as a birthday gift by my co-workers at my first job, where I am right now because I originally was an unpaid intern, so they gave it to me, and now I have been working at the same place for the last five years. And now we've got a couple of sports pops to look at, pretty much all my representative teams. So we've got, yes, the original MLB mascot, Mr. Met, which is also a very valuable one. We've also got Noah Syndergaard and Pete Alonzo, and this space is empty because I've got Jacob deGrom coming in the mail as we speak. 
Moving on to my Jets Pops, we've got the legendary Broadway Joe Namath, Sam Darnold, and Le'Veon Bell. For basketball, I've got Kristaps Porzingis, who is, of course, no longer on the Knicks anymore, but I'm hoping that there are going to be some more Knicks featured because I would love to get some old-school NBA players, especially since they're doing the Hardwood Classics right now. Like, if they ever made a Patrick Ewing or a Willis Reed or a Walt Frazier, would love to get my hands on that. And, of course, the legendary Michael Air Jordan. And in the world of hockey, I've got the King, Henrik Lundqvist. And even though he is not on the team, he just literally got traded after this pop came out. It's Matt Zuccarello. But he had been on the team for almost eight years. It was so great to get a pop of him as well. Now, guys, let's go to the top and take a look at everything you see over here. Hope you're ready. So we are going to try and get through this as best as we possibly can. So just expect a lot of breaks because I'm going to have to move this shelf a couple of times. So let's start with Disney over here. So we've got the Disney treasure box exclusive of Orville with Bernard and Bianca on top of him. This, of course, was included in the box. I love the fact that I have this. We've also got Aladdin's First Wish, which is one of my favorite scenes, and also I had to get Genie because of Robin Williams. This one, I still cannot believe I got. It is the 2018 Comic-Con exclusive double pack of Pain and Panic. We've also got Baymax, who was given to me by my brother-in-law as a gift, and this is actually the first oversized pop I ever got. We've also got the 2018 Emerald City Comic Con Army Man, Mrs. Nesbitt, Mr. Incredible, Elastigirl Target Exclusive, Frozone from The Incredibles as well, and my very first box lunch exclusive, which was the first Earth Day exclusive that ever came out. That is Wally, and the box and the pop itself are made out of recyclable materials. We've also got Tron and Sark from the 1982 cult Disney classic. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? We've got Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit. These pops are very hard to find right now. I got them when they first came out because I am such a fan of that movie. Now moving on to Star Wars, we've got R2-D2, the original. We've got BB-8, Chopper from Star Wars Rebels. The FYE exclusive flocked Last Jedi Chewbacca with Porg in his hand. Ahsoka Tano, Yoda, also Clone Wars version. This is the very first Star Wars pop I ever got, the Amazon exclusive of the First Order Stormtrooper, the Walgreens exclusive Clone Commander Cody, a couple of Smuggler's Bounty Box pops that I actually just bought on eBay because I didn't want the boxes, but I did want the pops, Grand Moff Tarkin, and Count Dooku. Love Christopher Lee as Count Dooku. And I've also got some Galactic Convention exclusives from the Star Wars Convention. So I've got the 2017 Grand Admiral Thrawn. I have been a fan of Grand Admiral Thrawn ever since I read the Timothy Zahn Star Wars trilogy of books. And because they were celebrating the anniversary of Star Wars The Phantom Menace, I had to get myself Darth Maul. Now we are moving on to some Marvel Pops, which the collection, I might say, is getting much bigger now because they're finally giving me some Pops that I really, really want, like the two that we looked at down there earlier. So I have, on the top, Fantastic Four. I've got Mr. Fantastic, I've got the GameStop exclusive of the Invisible Girl, or really the Invisible Woman, Sue Storm, Human Torch, Ben Grimm, The Thing, Doctor Doom, Silver Surfer, and over here, we've got the classic 1963 X-Men from the Marvel 80 Years Pop Collection, which is still growing, I might add. Cyclops, Marvel Girl, also known as Jean Grey, Iceman, Beast, and Angel. And over here, I've got the only other MCU pop that I've ever purchased. And no, I have not reviewed it yet, but I will be very soon. It is Captain America with the broken shield and holding Mjolnir from Avengers Endgame. A Hot Topic exclusive of Logan, aka Wolverine. The Walgreens exclusive of Juggernaut, because I am such a Juggernaut fan. This is the first Walgreens exclusive I ever got. And I've also got Deadpool Cable... I've got a Marvel Collector Core Spider-Man, which is the first one I ever purchased on eBay. The Specialty Series Iceman, the modern Iceman, because I'm a huge fan of Iceman, even though a lot of people criticize the way this pop looks, especially now when you compare it to the 1963 Iceman. So much better this way. And I've got 
all four stages of Groot. They are all exclusives as well. The Loot Crate exclusive Groot is the very first exclusive I ever actually got on my own. It was given to me as a gift. Dancing Baby Groot, which is an Entertainment Earth exclusive. That's the second exclusive from Entertainment Earth I ever got. I got the Amazon exclusive of Teenaged Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2's post credit scene. And, of course, I've got the Hot Topic Groot holding the Reaver Badge. Now we are moving on to DC, which is a much bigger collection, and this one is definitely going to grow if they play their cards right. So I've got my 2016 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive of Doomsday from Batman v Superman, and if I'm not mistaken, this is the very first San Diego Comic-Con exclusive I ever purchased. This is the comic moment of Batman and Robin from 1964, so celebrating the 80th anniversary of Batman had to join in on the celebration. I've got the PX previews exclusives of the Dark Knight Returns set, so I've got not all of them, but I got the Armored Batman, I've got Carrie Kelly Robin, I've got the Joker, which is one of the coolest pops I've ever seen, as well as Superman. I've also got two DC bombshells. One is my wife's and one is mine. This was included in the Target Bombshells collector box, which was Batman. And my wife, being a Rosie the Riveter fan, before the Rosie the Riveter pop ever came out, she got the Wonder Woman because it very much resembled Rosie. The first couple of pops that I ever purchased included the 1966 Adam West Batman show. I got the first four in a grouping and only moved forward from there. As a matter of fact, this is the only complete set, I believe, that I actually have outside of the X-Men set. So I've got Batman, Robin, Cesar Romero's Joker, Frank Gorshin's Riddler, I've got Yvonne Craig's Batgirl... I've got Burgess Meredith as the Penguin, and over there in the corner, I have Julie Newmar as Catwoman. I've also got over here the actors who I cannot name at this point in time, but I've got Mr. Freeze, and I've got King Tut. And now we're going to move on to the DCEU pops that I have. I've got Harley Quinn, who is without a doubt one of the best pops they ever made, Deadshot with the mask on. I've got the DC Legion of Collectors box Steppenwolf, which I also purchased. I also got the Hot Topic exclusive Glow in the Dark Shazam. Killer Croc. In case you guys didn't realize, they're all from the movie. So we got Suicide Squad, Shazam, etc. The Wonder Woman movie Wonder Woman. The Batman v Superman Aquaman, because I love this version of Aquaman. The Flash. Cyborg, which was actually my very first Walmart exclusive. And to move a few of these so you could see them, this is the San Diego Comic-Con from 2017 Ares from Wonder Woman. And this is the Legion of Collectors Dr. Maru, also known as Dr. Poison. And before we go over these four that I just moved, we'll just take a look at what they block. So, of course, I've got some Aquaman pops. I've got Orm, a.k.a. Ocean Master, and Black Manta, which without a doubt are two of my favorite Funko Pops, and the Pops that stand in front of them are... Why am I not surprised? Why are you not surprised that this is the case? I, of course, had to put Superman and Batman right up front, so I've got the Batman v Superman, Batman and Superman, and, of course, I've got their villains. I've got General Zod from Man of Steel. I actually found this on eBay for a very good price because when they made the Man of Steel collection, I was not interested in Funko Pop, so the fact that I got Zod was awesome. And, of course, I've got the Hot Topic exclusive Suicide Squad Joker, and the reason why I got this one, even though the others are pretty cool, is because this one reminded me a lot of the Alex Ross paintings of the Joker, and of course Alex Ross is one of my favorite comic book artists. Now we're going to move on to the Bruce Tim collection that I've got, and I'm really, really hoping that they continue to make more of these, but I've got a whole bunch of Batman the Animated Series Pops. I've got Batman, Robin, Batgirl, the Joker, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze, which was from the Batman the Animated Series Legion of Collectors box. I've got the 2017 San Diego Comic-Con Man-Bat, Clayface, Bane, 
Catwoman, Scarecrow, the Phantasm, and a rare one indeed, the Walmart exclusive Justice League Unlimited Martian Manhunter. Why they haven't made more of them, I do not know, but I really hope that they do because these are fantastic. And we've also got the specialty series Superman, which celebrates Superman's 80th anniversary, which I love, and the free comic book day PX previews exclusive of John Constantine. We've got some Ruby Pops. I am such a fan of Ruby, so of course I had to get these four. So I've got Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang, and I've also got some Invader Zims, both Hot Topic exclusives. The reissuing of Gur Hot Topic exclusive Glow in the Dark, and probably one of my favorite pop rides in my collection, the Hot Topic exclusive of Zim and Gur on the Pig. And now we're going to move into a little bit of horror. I do actually have some horror pops. I have the It movie moment of Pennywise in the Sewer meeting Georgie, that is also a Hot Topic exclusive and probably one of the coolest movie moments they've ever given us. From the Universal Movie Monsters, I've got the Metaluna Space Mutant, the FYE New York Comic Con exclusive Black and White Norman Bates from Psycho. I've got the Hot Topic Pennywise, which is the very first one that they had with him holding a balloon, Billy from Saw, and from Mystery Science Theater 3000, Tom Servo and Crow. And now we're going to move on to some movies and TV shows. So I, of course, am a huge fan of Firefly. This set just came and went, and I don't know why it was more popular, but I got them all when they first came out. So I've got Nathan Fillion as Captain Malcolm Reynolds, Zoe and Hoban Washburn, Jane Cobb, and Kaylee Fry, who is my favorite character on Firefly. I've also got some Quentin Tarantino film pops. So I've got from Pulp Fiction, Bruce Willis as Bruce Coolidge, which I absolutely love. This was actually my very first Entertainment Earth exclusive. I am sorry, not the Groot, this one, the bloody Go-Go Yubari. I got it when it first came out, and it's actually worth a pretty penny. I've also got Sheriff Chris Mannix, played by Walton Goggins from The Hateful Eight. And down here, I've got the Fifth Element pop that I love. I've got Corbin Dallas, Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg, which is one of my favorite Gary Oldman characters, and of course Mila Jovovich as Lilu. Over here, I've got some Edgar Wright pops, because I am such a fan of Edgar Wright. I've got the Blood Splatter Entertainment Earth exclusives of Sean and Ed. I've also got the Toys R Us exclusive Plum Tree Scott Pilgrim. And I also have the 2019 Emerald City Comic Con Ramona Flowers with Mallet. And of course, I've got Baby from Baby Driver. And over here, I've got the McManus Brothers Connor and Murphy from the Boondock Saints. Moving on with some more TV movies and even some books, I've got the Books A Million exclusive of The Cat in the Hat holding Mr. Crinklebein the Fish, the 2017 San Diego Comic-Con Flocked Lorax, and the Books A Million exclusive of The Grinch. I've also got the original Jay and Silent Bob from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. These are worth a lot of money. These are very hard to find. So glad I got them when they first came out. And one of my favorite films of all time, The Big Lebowski, also pops that are very hard to find. I've got The Dude, of course, played by one of my favorite actors of all time, Jeff Bridges, and probably John Goodman's greatest performance of all time as Walter. I've also got from the Cyber Monday box from last year, which actually they finally decided to allow these pops to be sold separately, but I got this on eBay for a good price. I am a huge fan of the Warriors, so I got the Cyber Monday or 2019 Holiday Funko Shop exclusive edition of the, a Baseball Fury. This is actually the leader. And a GameStop exclusive of Conan O'Brien. Also, from the wonderful world of movies, I've got Richard and the Target exclusive of Tommy Boy, Fat Guy in a Little Coat. Love that scene. Love that movie. I've also got Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka, and I've also got the Iron Giant from Ready Player One, because I love Ready Player One, and I love the Iron Giant. Why not combine it? And some of the most iconic television characters outside of Deadpool as Bob Ross, but I have Bob Ross, Mr. Rogers, Carmen Sandiego, Alex Trebek, 
And over here, I got some more TV stuff. I've got Norm Peterson from Cheers. I've got Cliff Clavin from Cheers. And over here, I have a Target exclusive Mitch and Cam double pack from Modern Family. And now I've got some Back to the Future stuff. And there's going to be more coming to this collection. But I've got the original Marty and Doc. And what makes them originals, you might ask? Because the numbers on these two pops, 60 and 61, were actually errors. They are now pops 40. 49 and 50, I believe. They were changed because of the fact that there were some errors made in regards to some of the lines that were coming out. So these were the originals. And as a matter of fact, this pop right here and this pop right here are the first two Funko Pops I ever purchased. And these were basically how the madness started. I've also got the fun exclusive of Marty McFly on Hoverboard from Back to the Future 2. This is also worth a decent amount of money right now. And I've also got the Loot Crate exclusive of 1955 Doc Brown. A couple of other movie pops that I have, I've got Axel Foley with Bananas from Beverly Hills Cop, and one of my favorite films of all time, Ferris Bueller from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I've also got Bill Lumberg from Office Space, love that movie, and I love Gary Cole. Some more television show stuff I have over here, I've got a Think Geek exclusive of the Upside Down Will from Stranger Things. This is actually the very first Think Geek exclusive and the only Think Geek exclusive I have. I also have The Man in Black from Westworld, love Ed Harris, Al Bundy from Married with Children, and Mr. Hankey from South Park. And to cap off all the TV pops here, I've also got Blinky from Troll Hunters. And now we've got some Lord of the Rings pops because I love that movie so much. I've got Sauron, Merry, and Pippin, and Legolas, and Gimli. We are moving in on to the final stretch. We've just got a few more to go, everybody. So we're going to go now into my Dragon Ball Z collection. A collection that I didn't think was going to really grow, but they just keep giving me good stuff. So I've got the very first Dragon Ball Z pop I ever bought, which was the regular Hot Topic exclusive of Goku. I've got Krillin and Bulma. I've got Goat. Han in his training outfit, the Vegeta Badman in a pink shirt, Hot Topic exclusive. I've got New York City Comic Con exclusive. I believe this was also 2016 or maybe even 2015. I don't know, but it is Super Saiyan Trunks. I've also got a GameStop exclusive of Super Saiyan 3 Goku, Androids 17 and 18. I've also got the 2019 New York Comic Con exclusive of Piccolo levitating in his lotus position. I've got Chi-Chi, and I've also got Raditz. My only Dragon Ball pop, which is Goku on a flying Nimbus, and the Galaxy Toys original exclusive of Shenron. This is the very first Shenron pop they ever made. And I've also got two more retro classic cartoon characters. I've got a specialty series of El Kabong from Quick Draw McGraw, and I've got Gossamer from Looney Tunes, also a specialty series. Now, before we move on to the world of video games, we've got one more pop ride to look at, and it is James Bond. This is a Sean Connery in the Aston Martin D885. As a James Bond fan, very glad to have it. So in regards to video games, I've got Sub-Zero and Scorpion from the original Mortal Kombat. And even though these are movie things, these are actually connected to video games, I do have the entire Warcraft set. So this is three complete sets that I actually have of Funko Pops. So I've got Lothar, King Lane, Durtan, Orgrim, and Garona. Also, a Funko Shop exclusive Christmas pop. This is a Silver Mr. Monopoly. I know... We know him as Mr. Monopoly, but his real name is Rich Uncle Pennybags. And when I saw that they actually were making him as if he were an actual game piece, because that's pretty much what it looks like to me, I had to get my hands on it. And I've also got the 2017 New York Comic Con 8-bit exclusive of Dig Dug. The GameStop exclusive of one of the Invaders from Space Invaders. 8-bit GameStop, also love it. Hubert. And the last four, we've got Mega Man, Dr. Wily, Sonic with a Ring, and a Walmart exclusive of Cuphead. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is every single Funko Pop that I own.
Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing this grand collection of mine, as well as some of the other Funko products that I do have. Even though there are not many, it was wrong to not feature them in the Funko Pop video. So in the box below, feel free. I actually have not asked about this yet throughout this entire series. Let me know what some of the highlights of this video were, just because there were so many Funko Pops to go over. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next one. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.